Capricorn. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. This is going to be your November mid-month spread. So this will be from November 15th to December 15th. So let's see what is going on in the life of a Capricorn. All right. So let's get right into it. Past, present, future. What is happening for the sign of, of Capricorn? Past, present, future. What is happening with the sign of Capricorn? Okay, so the energy that you guys have is the King of Wands. So there could be a fire sign. Leo, Aries, or Sagittarius is very significant for you this month. And with the Three of Swords in the reverse, there could be a sense of you guys uh, repressing some pain that you may be feeling or some disappointment that you may be feeling towards a situation that was very conflicting. It's like you're keeping it a secret, the pain or, um, you know, anything that you're feeling regarding this person or situation. And with the King of Cups in the reverse, maybe there's promiscuity on your part or on their part, but there's just something that is being masked here, I feel. The first card that we have for the past is the Lover's card in the reverse. So this could have been a fallout that you had with someone, a breakup, or at the very least, heavy arguing. Eight of Cups in the reverse. A past lover returning, okay? Wanting to reconcile with you. Or, you know, you returning to an ex and wanting to reconcile with them. But the King of Swords in the reverse, this could have been a Libra, Aquarius, or Gemini. But the King of Swords in the reverse is someone who is extremely tyrannical, very selfish. Um, someone who just doesn't give a shit about anybody but themselves. You know, and everything that they do is for their benefit. So I can definitely see that as being a very conflicting situation, whether you're holding that energy or it's somebody else. And you're just choosing not to concern yourself with this. You know, it's just something that you don't want to worry about. So you're like, you know what? Whatever. Do what you got to do. We have the Knight of Pentacles where you're just choosing, you know what? I don't want to worry about this. Let me just slowly move away and let me, you know, really strategize how I want to move forward in the situation. And with the Emperor, you know, again, this could have been an Aries that you guys were dealing with, maybe a fire sign in general. But I really just feel like this is you guys taking control of the situation, saying, look, I know how this ends. I've been through this before, and I'm not going to let this shit go down like that again. So it's like you're moving on, and, and you feel strong, and you feel powerful in the fact that you turned your back on something. Now, the next card you have for your past is the Two of Wands. So there's a path that you're, you know, super passionate about taking, and you go ahead and do that. But with the High Priestess in the reverse, there could be some red flags that are popping up with this path that you want to take. But you could be choosing to ignore, you know, any warning signs. And that's something that, you know, could get you into potential trouble. Okay, and this could be, again, with the Leo, Aries, or Sagittarius. Alright, so with the Hermit card, this is really going to be a situation where you want to do your research. You want to make sure that you know who or what you're moving towards. Because there could be things that you're not seeing, okay? The hermit is somebody who goes into a place of solitude and they don't come out until they fully have a good grasp on what they're going towards, all right? So hopefully that's what you guys did, okay? Because there was this sense of indecision or maybe it was you choosing between two people, two jobs, uh, two situations, two scenarios, okay? Now, in the present moment, the first card that you have is the Knight of Cups. So it could be a Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio that you're dealing with. Uh, but this is someone who's being very loving, very amorous, showing their love and affection towards the situation. And maybe you guys are waiting for an offer that hasn't come in. Or maybe you gave an offer to somebody um, and they're not accepting or, or someone gave you an offer that you're not accepting. Okay? Ten of Cups in the reverse. So there could be someone who's possibly trying to get your attention. But it's just like you're, you're just not in a place to pay attention to them. You're just like, you know what, I, I know you're sweet, I know you're nice, but I just I can't do it right now. I'm feeling too unstable within myself. Um, and I think that that was a good you know decision to make because we have the world card and we have the wheel card. So with this wheel of fortune, life is propelling and it's moving forward in a good way. But with you leaving uh, certain people and circumstances behind, it's going to work in your benefit. But the only problem here is that you just feel stuck. It's like you're so indecisive and you're not sure whether or not you made the right decision. Okay. Now with the page of wands in the verse, this could be this, uh, you know, fire sign that keeps 
popping up for you guys that they could stop communicating with you in a way of passion or in like that sweet tender way that they did in the past and that's why you feel stuck and it's like you know what I'm gonna stand my ground with the situation no matter how frustrated I am but again it's you're between a rock and a hard place you don't know what to what to think of the situation the next card you guys have is the Nine of Swords, so again, Libra, Aquarius, or Gemini. But I feel like this is you guys moving towards a goal that you want and not letting anyone get in the way, not letting anyone fuck with you, deciding that you just want to cut out anything that's not serving you. Ace of Swords in the reverse. And there's conflict when you do things in that way, or if there's an air sign there, then you're having conflict with this person. And it could be because they're, you know, only seeing things in their way. And with the five of pentacles here, somebody gets left out in the cold. Someone gets rejected. And it could be due to secrets, again, and promiscuity. So the first card that we have for the future is the tower card in the reverse. So with the tower card in the reverse, there's a big change happening with someone else in your life that's going to affect you. And with the three of cups in the reverse, third party situation. Okay. So if you guys are having an affair, it's like this person switches up because of that affair. Or you could find out that someone that you're dealing with is having an affair. And it just puts a pause on this new start that you may have wanted with them. Okay, It could cause a fallout or, again, at the very least, very heavy arguing. Now, the next card that you guys have for the future is the five of wands in the reverse. So with the five of wands in the reverse, you don't want to compete. You don't want to argue. You don't want to fight. You don't want to get into anything petty. So it's like you're doing everything that you can to avoid that. The chariot. I see you guys moving forward and with speed. I see you guys hitting the ground running and just moving away from the situation in order to remain a certain balance in your life. And I think that's the best thing for you to do. That's going to bring new, good, abundant things into your life. And that's going to put you in a place where you slowly start to get over any heartbreaks that either you caused or that you feel. And you're moving to a place of forgiveness, okay? You are you could be forgiving somebody for the secrets that came out. Or they could be forgiving you. But there's a sense of you finding stability throughout all the chaos. Now, the last card that you guys have for the future is the Four of Swords in the Reverse. So, with the Four of Swords in the Reverse... Um, this is you guys moving forward, okay? You've put a lot of thought into this, and it's just like, you know what? I, I have to, you know, I, this is a situation where I was very unhappy. If you guys keep, you know, a lot of you are going to be dealing with a fire sign. Maybe that fire sign was just playing you the whole time. You know, you know what? You look good, you're great in bed, but you're not worth this, you know, you're not worth this chaos that I'm feeling right now within myself. And with the Page of Pentacles, you make yourself the priority and you're like, you know what? Yes, I need to start over. Yeah, I need to start at square one, but I have the ability to rebuild myself and that's what I'm going to do. So I really see you guys going into something that's going to be very, very positive for you and building yourself up. But there might be this dissatisfaction against somebody who is just unreliable in your life. Even if this is you guys taking your energy, I see you moving away from that because it's just if you were the unreliable person... I see that it's not making you happy to be that unreliable person anymore, okay? All right, so let's see what the advice is for you guys this month. Again, like I use every month and mid-month, Earth Magic uh, Oracle Cards by Stephen D. Farmer. What is the advice for the sign of Capricorn from November 15th to December 15th? What is going on for the sign? Okay. Uh, who got this card? I think Aries. Aries may have gotten this card. No, Gemini may have gotten this card. Okay. So if you guys are dealing with the Gemini, maybe you want to cross-watch their reading. Now, this is such a beautiful card, Childhood Innocence. And basically what I explained to Gemini, I really think that that's, you know, the sign I did it for. When we're children, we're so excited about life, who can, who we can become when we grow up, you know, what's available to us. And it's like, you know, when I'm 25, I want to be a billionaire and I want to own 15 helicopters and I want to be a pilot. And, you know, it, it's just such a genuine, pure energy where we really feel like we could take over the world. And, you know, as we grow into adults, we lose faith. We fall into the conformity of, of, uh, life of socialism of consumerism of you know making like trying to impress people that are shit that are doing nothing for our lives 
and we get caught up in all the social media bullshit, all these things that don't really matter. And we wake up one day and we're just crying and we're like, oh my God, my life is shit. What happened? You deterred from the original path, from your pure path, from what you wanted to do, from that excitement that you had in life. You let it go. You let it go and you let yourself get into circumstances where there's people who are treating you like shit. Maybe you let it happen a little bit longer than it needed to. Um, maybe you did something to impress a group of people that are absolute shit and it doesn't matter. Maybe you bought an overly expensive car that you couldn't afford to impress your neighbor who doesn't like you anyways, who probably poisoned your dog last summer. You know, so it's like all these things that we're doing and for what? Would the 10-year-old self that you were, you know, years ago, would they be proud of who you are? Would they say, wow, that's who I turned out to be. This is going to be awesome. For a lot of you, the answer is going to be no. Because we lose sight of this pureness. We lose sight of this innocence. We lose sight of the, I don't want to say, of the intuition of a child. Okay? Have you ever noticed that kids are never wrong? You know, the, the best way to hire a good nanny is have your kids sit in. They're going to tell you who's good or who's bad, and they're going to know. Okay? Kids have such a powerful moral compass. They know what they want in life, and they do it with such compassion and such love. And it's just such a beautiful thing to watch. It's such an innocent thing where it's like nobody's hurt them yet. Nobody's, you know, turned down their dream. Go back to this, guys. Go back to the root of all of this. What did you want for yourself? And why have you let that dream go? We're only here for one life. We can't, we can't do things that are going to make our parents happy or that are going to make, you know, our ex is jealous. Like, we, we can't live life like that. We have to do something that's going to be emotionally gratifying for ourselves. If we're doing things to impress other people or we're doing things because we think that that's just the right thing to do, that's what society says, you're going to end up unhappy. So I want you guys to kind of uh, self-reflect for a little bit. What am I doing in my life that my 10-year-old self would not be proud of? Will they look at me and cry with happiness or will they look at me and cry in disgust? And do what you need to, to make that child happy. Act as if they're sitting next to you. Act as if they're watching your every move. Okay? Don't let them down. So right now, there's something that you guys are getting out of. Yeah, there's a lot of chaos. There's a lot of bullshit. But bullshit happens when we're not at peace, when we're not still within ourselves. So that's something that you guys really have to focus on, stabilizing yourself, bringing in good things. And pleasing that child within. Okay? Having the intuition that children have when there's a good or bad thing. We all naturally have that. But I feel like you guys may have been blinded here. Especially with the high priestess in the reverse. It's not that your intuition is not there. It's that you're ignoring it. It's not that, you know, God hates you. Or that the universe hates you. He or the universe gave you signs. You just ignored it. Okay? If something makes you feel uneasy, don't question it any further. Just let it go. This was a very good reading because I feel like you guys are realizing what's important and what needs to be focused on. And that is your inner child. That is the page here. So I like that, you know, pages are children in the deck. Let's focus on the inner child. Okay, guys? And it literally looks like he could fit into this picture. Awesome reading. So, for those of you that do want personal readings, I have gotten the wait time down three to five days. Okay, so for an emailed video, um, you can go ahead and do that. Absolutely everything is in the description. My emergency readings. If you guys have iPhone um, and you want to get in touch with me instantly, uh, there's an app called Instant Go. My link is below. It'll take you to the app store and then to my page. Uh, so you guys, you can literally call or text me. I answer questions, um, you know, right away. I just pull the cards. I give you the answer right away. So um, it's slightly more expensive to do same-day emergencies or, you know, the app because it is, you know, instant. You do get in touch with me same day most likely. Um, but for those of you who aren't in any sort of urgency that you just want to look into something, but you're not going to, you know, die if I get back to you in like four or five days, then go ahead and take uh, that option of the email reading. Okay, but all the prices, all the different readings, I even do tarot lessons, whatever you guys need, it is all there, all my emails, everything, all the financial institutions that I use, it's all there. 
Okay, so read that thoroughly, you know, before sending me any emails, uh, questioning anything. But if you do have questions after reading it, go ahead and shoot me an email. All right. I love you guys. This is good. All right. Don't be sad about anything that you may feel is a fallout. Focus on this guy or this girl right here. Take care, Capricorn.